Is this the most improved phone of 2022? All right, here is my dirty little secret. My SIM card is actually back in this bad boy right here. This is the Moto Edge Plus. I've really enjoyed my time with Xiaomi's and Vivo's. The OnePlus 11 rocked my socks, especially the OnePlus as a phone that does phone things. But for some of the work that I do, phones that can also do more computer things, I really like that experience too, giving me better tools for getting work done without always needing to fire up my workstation or open a laptop. To that point, Specifically, my personal SIM card has been bouncing back and forth between a lot of devices, the aforementioned OnePlus 11, but spending the mo majority of its time in the Moto Edge Plus and the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. Where the Edge Plus started last year as a powerful phone that could run kind of concerningly hot and nuke its battery, I now think this is one of the better behaved phones of its era. You might notice from my initial coverage of the Edge Plus that now I have a different color unit. I swapped out my Verizon model. This is now the the unlocked version. I'm using it on Mint, which is, you know, sort of piggybacking on T-Mobile's network. I set the phone up again as a fresh unit. I, I know we're supposed to transfer stuff over, but I like setting them up fresh, not moving over any other baggage. And in that initial setup, installing all of my apps and updating all of my contacts, all of that information, the screen did get hot. It is an 8 Gen 1. So I was a little concerned about that. Like maybe that hasn't improved at all, or maybe it's just always going to be the situation with that generation of phones. But in using this for a couple weeks again, I'm I'm getting far fewer of those running really hot in my pocket for no good reason situations. I feel for a lot of the 8 Gen 1 powered phones, that's one of the things that sends off a little bit of a concern signal. It's just updating information, the screen's off, and it's tagging that LTE or 5G, and boy howdy is it running real hot against my thigh. Really hasn't happened a whole lot on this recent version. I'll throw a really beefy workload, you know, throw in some video editing and rendering at this thing, and when it's doing computer tasks, yeah, it can run kind of warm. That's what we should expect. It's been so much better behaved for the just daily social media and web browsing stuff. This is still one of the most powerful phones that was released last year. Only now it seems to settle down a little bit better and it seems to be a little kinder to your battery. I really don't want to let that one go. I, I feel it deserves some attention. The battery life improvements have really been rocking my socks. Two different days. This was a little bit of a heavier day and I made it to the end of the evening with 31% left on the battery and having roughly used it for over eight hours of screen on time. This phone does not have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It's just a little bit smaller than that. These are really good screen on times for, for what I would say is a moderately heavy day of use, eight hours, and still plenty of room left before we would have gotten a low battery warning. Now flipping the script on that on a much lighter day made it all the way past dinner time and into the evening with about four and a half hours of screen on time. 65% of the battery left. Now, this day is a bit more indicative of my kind of mixed use where I use phones a lot screen off because I'm constantly listening to music and podcasts. This easily would have given me over two days of runtime. And I haven't had to do anything serious. The only thing that I've switched out, instead of using the full 144 hertz refresh rate display, I set it to the adaptive where it's 120 or 60. But that's also kind of the funny thing about the Moto Edge Plus. It's got a fancy 144 hertz display Display, and right now I'm not using it at 144, I'm only maxing out at 120, but it doesn't scale very well below that. Once you hold for a couple seconds, it'll drop down to 60, but that's it. It's just sort of the normal 60 hertz refresh rate. There's nothing fancy in here dropping it even lower. And yet the overall battery life on this is outpacing phones that had much fancier screen technologies for lower refresh rates and even more aggressive throttling and app management. I'm getting better numbers here than I was on a OnePlus 10 Pro or a Galaxy S22. I only have a guess as to why this was so different than my Verizon model of, of Edge Plus, and, I, and I'm hoping someone in the comments can maybe maybe at least suggest if I'm heading in the right in the right direction here. I don't have millimeter wave out here, but I feel maybe there was a difference in modems. Maybe that occasional heartbeat as it's looking for millimeter wave, the ultra wideband 5G, might have caused additional power drain, might have increased thermals inside the phone. Maybe just going to a regular sub six 5G supported by T-Mobile's network here, maybe that's helping contribute to some of the overall uh, heat and battery life performance. 
I don't know, share some thoughts, drop me a comment down below. Am I on the right track there? I'm not a network specialist, so I don't really know if, if that's really a major contributing factor. And, and when you're on your way down to correct me and my misinformation, maybe smash that bell icon because there are a bunch of things that I do know more about. I've gotten a lot of questions about things like updates, and I still really like Moto's method for keeping your phone a bit more up to date. We do not get a lot of OTAs on Motorola devices, but instead, when individual components are ready to be improved, like Moto camera here, you just get an app update in Google Play. It's not like a Samsung. When there's an update for Ready 4, the Motorola desktop mode, it just gets pushed to your phone and then you just get that improvement. So it matters a little less to me if we're getting a big lump of software every month because it just feels like this is constantly being touched and refined and iterated. We have gotten a few larger OTAs and we're decently up to date on things like security patches, but really the thing that's gonna be kind of funny here the thing that's a little bit pokey is that we're still only on Android 12. I just like to kind of slide this in here because this is one of my favorite pocket computer devices. And uh, one of my previous favorite pocket computers, the LG V60 from the year 2020, which also had stylus support and a really good desktop mode, just recently got updated to Android 13. I feel the refinements on the Moto have been very welcome. These are these are excellent improvements to the phone. This is running better than it ever has. LG doesn't even have a phone department anymore, and they got the jump on Motorola for Android 13. There's something so refreshingly old school about going back to a Motorola for all of the little uh, customizations. We're not going to see a ton of difference on things like the UI, this is pretty stock Android. In that respect, it is a lot like Sony's strategy here too. The UI, the skin, they're pretty much whatever Android, but there's a lot of attention paid to software improvements to help other productivity or content creation uses. It never gets old being able to show off just like a chopping gesture to turn on your flashlight. This has been a core part of the Moto experience for years now. If someone was using an older Moto and they got used to something like that, it's just nice to still have it on a modern premium tier device. I always love showing off that V60, but just the same here, you know, having stylus support, the, the case, the little sleeve for the stylus, it's still a bit awkward, but having active pen support with the little Bluetooth radio, you can use this as a remote camera shutter. It makes this the top productivity competitor for a phone like the Note 22. The full complement of software and services that you can map all of the little widgets and, and short little applets. The fantastic support for split screen multitasking just sort of baked into the experience. I genuinely believe that Moto Ready 4 represents the top option for a desktop mode. The most computer-like experience that you can have plugging your phone in to a, a larger display and certainly a gold star. One of the reasons why I would say this is the most improved improvements to the camera app. Please pardon, brief interruption. We got to thank this video sponsor, you. The videos on this channel would literally not be possible without the generous contributions from the folks on my Patreon, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. And over the couple of years that I've been running that Patreon, it's just proven to be an incredible community that really does help me take my content up to the next level. But we never want supporting content creators to feel like a burden, especially for folks who might be struggling right now. In an age of algorithms, those folks who are out there sharing content on social media, posting it to appropriate subreddits, bringing new fun tech geeks to the conversation, that kind of effort means the world to creators like me. But if you have the means and you would like to contribute, please consider checking out patreon.com slash some gadget guy. I'm writing up additional posts, production diaries. It's where my camera deep dives and camera analysis articles live. You get the 4K videos without the ads built into them. And we also have our own little private discord, which is my safe space to nerd out. Once again, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. Thank you all so much for the support, the contributions. These videos would not be possible without you. And now let's get back to the rest of the video. Where this was a challenging app to use at launch, it was kind of a glitchy mess, the current feel is pretty solid. I still don't think a Motorola would ever take my top content creator award for the year. This isn't the bestest camera of the year, but this is really easy to get great shots out of. And for the most part, those video resolution and aspect ratio bugs have all disappeared. I've used this phone recently for a couple B-roll shots just because I had it in my pocket and I could take video of another phone and it does the job like a champ. I just kind of dig that Motorola doesn't have the flashiest presentation. This company has built their reputation on being something a bit more productivity focused. You know, they make phones for doing the business. There's going to be less of the wow factor here, but then you get things like the radio management 
surprisingly a little bit better than some of the phones that have been coming out this year. I don't have that same back pocket Bluetooth bug problem. The Motorola Bluetooth connection is a bit more sure-footed. This has been such a pleasant surprise, such a, such a happy revisiting. I don't always get this where coming back a couple months later and you pick up the phone, you start playing with it again and you're like, oh yeah, well, I guess it's kind of the same as it was when I left it off. This feels like a more sure-footed and a more refined experience, but it's also where I'm starting to get a bit of an uneasy feeling in my tum tum. Using this Screamer pocket computer, I am kind of getting some of the same foreboding, the same forewarning feeling that I had in sort of the last days of LGs. It doesn't seem to matter if Motorola can put out a really well-built, powerful, business-grade companion computer, a unique device with unique features, but it only seems to matter if a company can spend hundreds of millions of dollars marketing the device, the merit of the phone, never really seems to break through into that consumer mindshare. This is one of the best mobile compute platforms made recently. The cycle of fire sales on premium phones though, it means there's probably less and less interest in bringing the higher end, the competitive devices to the United States. The premium tier Android landscape is eroding. I'm worrying that it's dying. These days it's practically non-existent for people under the age of 30, which is really bad news for us enthusiasts who appreciate having different features and different capabilities on different pocket computers that satisfy the needs of different consumers. It makes me really nervous. It makes me really anxious to highlight the fire sale strategy because I feel that was sort of the death spiral of LG devices. But as it stands today, this is an insane deal. And if you've got family members who might be struggling to cover other tech costs, like getting a new PC or a new laptop, a 500-ish dollar phone can go a really long way. $500 can go a lot farther here than buying a less expensive phone and a, a cheap Chromebook. This is so much more powerful than a cheap Chromebook. Oh, I've been digging it, folks. This phone really has been a joy to revisit. And, and I've been very anxious about how the eight Gen 1 phones were going to age over time. Just a little refinement, a, a little software attention, those details, it's getting a lot better. So folks, thanks so much for watching, for following up on these. I know Motorola, that's not the most popular topic right now with the current phones that are being released, but it really mattered to me that my SIM card, it feels at home in this little computer. And I felt I should share. Thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. If you're checking out the links in the descriptions below my videos, if you're hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the multiverse. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Mastodons. I'm trying to play a little more with the Flickr for sharing my photos. I stream my podcast on the Twitch, uh, not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams, but I will catch you all on the next video.